Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Boric, and another loss is what became in the column for the Flyers tonight. It is their fourth straight, but there's also a lot of positives to take, which is really all we need for the Flyers at this point of the season in a lost season. As a whole, you just want positives with the youngsters moving forward, and you had that in this game. As let's get right into it, but first and foremost, please need to subscribe to help us grow to 2.30 or more by the end of April to meet our goal. Hope everybody's having a good month of April this far and has a great Easter that's about to kick off in a few hours at midnight. But the Flyers first in this game went up 2-0 on a great play in the neutral zone by Bobby Brink to be able to get the puck, then move up the ice, go in, crash in on the net. Joel Fairby then able to have a beautiful bank out of midair for his 17th goal of the season where Keith Yondo also got his 15th assist of the season. Owen oh, Tippett then on a fortunate bounce that it looked like Sanheim probably should have got an assist on. Either way, great play by Sanheim. They said that the Buffalo player touched it, negating the assist. Maybe that did happen. I'll have to go back and look. But either way, great play by Owen Tippett and great backhand by Owen Tippett. But then Kyle Ocposo left open on the power play. Obviously, the Flyers' penalty kill on special teams in general. They're 12-something percent on the power play and not much better on the penalty kill. 20, like, low... I think it's teens percentage. I don't even think they're at the 20s. So they're just pitiful at special teams. Let's put it that way. Let Akposo score. Darlene on a beautiful play by Jeff Skinner that he was just able to hang onto the puck and get it to Darlene. Was able to tie it up. But then TK gave the Flyers a lead again on a beautiful near side shot that he was able to pick his spot on Craig Anderson, who played a very good game against the Flyers tonight as well. 29 shots for the Sabres to the 21 of the Flyers. But he wasn't spectacular. They could have been able to beat him more. They were not able to beat him more. And the wily veteran Anderson was able to get the 4-3 win in the end due to the fact that Vinny Hinostrosa was able to get to a puck that I don't know how the hell the Flyers did not block him out in the slot as there was about three Flyers there and one of him, and he was able to get to the puck in the middle there as nobody converged in the puck. They kind of just got all watching it in the air as he got it and then scored. And then Tage Thompson was able to have his Roy Holiday goal, his 34th goal of the season, as he's been playing spectacular. you having a career breakout season. But the positives for the Flyers in this one were, even though on paper uh, the power play still came out, as we look at it here, to be 0 for 4. With Bobby Brink, it looked sharper having Brink on that power play. He was able to set himself up in front of the net. I think in his first three games of his career, he's looked good as well, being able to be sharper in front of the net. Kind of reminds you of, dare I say it, Danny B himself. So I think he's a guy that's going to be able to mix himself in, just like Noah Cates. If both of those guys don't make the team out of next year's gate, I don't know what the hell the Flyers are looking at. Where Ronnie Adder seems like he could use a little bit more seasoning and nurturing in the minors. This game I thought was actually his best game, but he could use a little bit more growth and nurturing as well. Adder could where Cates and Brink. Brink's only had a three-game game size. Cates had a little bit more. I think Cates has looked fantastic on both ends of the ice and definitely should be making the team out of the game next year. Definitely should be playing every team every game excuse me down the stretch and Brink has looked very good in his first three and should obviously play every game down the stretch Adder should also play every game down the stretch and maybe that'll change my take on me thinking all three will make it out of the game next year but I think he's the guy that shows he could use a little bit more AHL season and that's perfectly fine because they're all just 23 24 years of age so all of that is a okay Jose but when it comes to the overall game youngsters and Noah Cage continue to look good he had the one assist uh, on the Konechny goal as well as uh, Travis Sanheim, who's by far going to win the Barry Ashby Award for the best defenseman uh, for the Flyers this year. Tippett's continued to look good. Tippett's had chance after chance after chance. The thing with Owen Tippett is if he can consistently hit his spot more, he's going to go from having 9 to 13, 14, 17 goals in a season to 27, 37 goals in a season because he has had the chances, but it's can he have the accuracy um, it's almost like a pitcher in baseball, right? He has the good uh, shot, the good stuff on the shot, but can he have the accuracy to be good enough and get the goal total from 10 to 17 to the 27 to the 37, what he was kind of drafted to be in the top 10 there. But I hope everybody enjoyed this quick recap video. I think there was positives. Noah Cates, to me, would be a star of this game. Bobby Brink, uh, I don't care that he only got an assist in this game. Uh, he was great overall. He's definitely a star of the game uh, in this game as well in a losing effort. 
and also Owen Tippett. So you have Cates, Tippett, and Brink that you all want to build forward with that are stars of the game for the Flyers, just going over guys that did well for the Flyers as the three stars. And then Martin Jones did well again. He got hung out to dry on a couple goals. I thought he's been better than his statistics have shown all season, just like Carter Hart's been better than his statistics have shown. It's just the Flyers got to get damn defense uh, protection better in front of the net. They're playing better overall defense at times now via having the no cases on the team in the neutral zone and all that type of stuff, but that front defense still hasn't been that squeaky clean for a Philadelphia Flyers. But this has been a quick reaction to the Flyers' 4-3 loss, that there was some bright spots in it, but also, but again, a loss is a loss. But at this point, it's all about the young guys in Cage, who was a star of the game, Tippett, who was a star of the game, Adder played his best game, I wouldn't give him a star. Of the game, but Brink, who was also a star of the game, and then Jones continued to look good. It seems like we'll get Felix Sandstrom and get to see what he can do in his third game in the bigs uh, tomorrow against the Sabres at home. So that'll be interesting and fun to see what he's able to do. He was the main reason it wasn't bigger than a 4 nothing loss against the Rangers his last time out. And then, of course, at a 42-save game in his debut. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or above in these use widgets. Keep us growing to 230 or more by the end of April. Really appreciate your guys' love and support this far. Go Flyers. Hopefully we keep making strides in the guys that we want to see as part of the rebuild, like the four guys I actually mentioned in this video that are the youngsters in Adder, Kate, Brink, um, himself. Also, I could even throw Hayden Hodgson into that category. And Owen Tippett, plus you want to see Sandheim continue to get better as you're building to grow another really good Flyers team a couple years down the line. Peace out, everybody.